train at Penn Station, arrive at Penn Station and be somewhere completely different. So go to Newark. And you know that, right? I mean, as a foreigner, I always get confused. I try to go to Newark, airport, I mean, Penn Station, next station, Penn Station. Very confused. I wonder how many tourists there was there. Anyway, uh, next up, with Andy, we have, whoa, Andy Schwartz, who is the Assistant, assistant Commissioner for Public Space for the DOT, used to work at uh, projects for public spaces, and is into something called pedestrians. <laughs> Please, a round of applause for the next speaker. Hi. Uh, not cool to put me after the funny guy. <laughs> also not cool to not tell me that I wasn't supposed to have the dorky intro slide with my name on it. Um, <laughs> but this slide also shows what I like to say is, you know, never underestimate where people want to be in New York City. They love the street. They love to sit in the street. They'll sit right on top of it. The uh, latent demand for use and need of public space in New York is huge. So. You know, we put out the construction barrels, we haven't done anything else to a space, all we've done is close off the street to cars. People go, they use it. Anything else we do from an urban design standpoint is basically gravy after we've closed the street to cars. And <clears throat> when we got to Times Square, we knew that was true, but we also knew that it was going to be under such intense scrutiny that we needed to do something else. So the chairs and the tables and the umbrellas that we had ordered weren't ready, so our friends at the Times Square Alliance went out and bought lawn chairs and we brought out some programming, and this intimate mix um, really created something great. Um, of course, you know, not everybody agreed, but I, I show this, but then I blow my lead, which is that I actually think that the real relevant article that came out was um, the one that Michael Beirut wrote right at the same time. So the High Line and Times Square opened pretty much exactly the same time. One was incredibly beautifully designed, perfect. The other not designed at all, but still looks great and was used very well, so the tension between the two. Really good, I'm not doing so well on my timing. Um, Green Market, I think, most undervalued public space makers in the city. We love to work with them. We follow them around. We look for places where they want to be. That's where we want to be. Um, and they are great partners of ours. Another great programmer of public space is events. Commercial events, TV commercials, public events, any kind of events. There's a huge demand for people to use New York City as their backdrop. We love creating spaces where this can happen. The key is sort of regulating it and not making our the public spaces that we create into too huge of a commodity. Ah, yes, and concessions. So, eyes and ears on the space. Alex talked about Jane Jacobs. We love our eyes on the street. So we look for opportunities to create um, uh, things that people want to do, places where people want to go in, in the city and in these public spaces. This is the first sub-concession that's gone up in one of our public spaces. It's a little kiosk in Times Square. We have that opportunity in lots of places. And what is it about yoga? People love to do yoga in the street. So whether you're 12 kids on Montague Street in Brooklyn or you're 1,200 people in Times Square, yoga seems to be a very riveting event for people. We love to create these kinds of spaces where people can go out and do what they want, but again, never underestimate. People always want to do crazy things. We have about 45 projects that we're working on now in every borough. Um, more to come. These projects are in various stages of design and planning. Some of them are um, just temporary, tables and chairs out in the street like you saw before. Some of them are under construction to be completely overhauled and rebuilt, new pavers, fountains, all kinds of things, permanent capital redesign. Um, here's a little story. Here's one in the Bronx. This is a great intersection they call the hub. A lot of my friends here from City Planning know the space well. Um, this is the intersection of Willis Avenue, 3rd Avenue. We closed Willis Avenue, routed the buses up 3rd. Then we had a huge amount of bus traffic queuing up along 3rd Avenue there, but we had thousands of people who couldn't get out of this space. So what did we do? Well, we very carefully looked at how people use it, how much space they needed, where the flexible areas needed to be, how much room people needed to wait for the bus, and where people could stay and stand still. Now we have a beautiful design that is making its way to construction um, in the heart of the Bronx with artwork, new trees, etc. Here's another great one you'll all be familiar with nearby here, Astor Place, where we squeezed um, a very wide, over-designed street um, called Cooper Square down to a very narrow, small, one-way street, and we took all that extra space and we redistributed it around Astor. So the subway island is twice as big. Astor Cube is now connected to the sidewalk. 
Designing a great destination in New York City is not an easy thing. We struggled with this for a long time. Turns out less is more. So just giving people a place to gather, program views as they want, come up and around the cube without cars whizzing around them is a great thing. We also have a lot of great stormwater capturing uh, elements here and a lot more green than there was before. There's the famous subway kiosk in Island. It's now twice as big. Lots of room to wait for your friends, hang out, hopefully not um, destroy the kiosk. But, um, you know, that's really what we want.